Well, dealing with some rain this morning. Um, we haven't got snow in like two weeks, so I'm not really sure what to expect up in the mountains. And I'm not sure how long it's been raining. I don't know if it rained last night. If it rained last night, it might mean that we got a little bit of snow in the mountains. What's up? Riker the lifesaver. You want some lunch, Always brother? bringing me some lunch. <laughs> yeah, you know me. Because Judd you... never packs us food. <laughs> you know I can't go very long without some food, Heck so. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we made it up to the parking lot. It's at least snowing here a little bit. It was raining almost all the way up to the top, so better than having rain up here and super foggy. So I'm sure we'll just be kind of cranking through the trees most of the day um, if the visibility doesn't clear up. Nice ripping. Oh, that was cool, man. So loud. It's Got a your lot helmet on. warmer than I thought it was gonna be. All right, so we made it to the first meadow. We have two guys with us that um, don't always ride snow bikes. So we're letting them play around in the meadow for a little while before we head back into the trees. Um, the snow is pretty dense, like it's pretty heavy. But on a snow bike, it's okay because it means that you can pretty much go anywhere because of the added traction, so. Still been pretty fun so far. What do you think so far today? Dude, this snow is unbelievable. Yeah. It's crazy. Days like today are where the short track kills it because the snow is like dense and heavy enough that it just rips. And that's when you can actually wheelie and play. And t days like today, it's freaking awesome. Yeah, I was actually saying that just a second ago. Like, there's not really a bad snow day on a snow bike because even though it's super dense, it just gives you all that traction to like just whip up stuff and yeah, like everything. You can go so many more places and do it so much more fun. Yeah. Cause you're not worried about just burying your track. Like, dude, it's dope today. I think more ideal is when we have like a solid base like this, but then with like two feet of powder. Yeah. And then it's a little bit easier on your front ski, a little more powder shots and stuff, but right. still for, it's kind of like a spring riding day, honestly. Yeah. Even though it's the February yeah. first or second today. Yeah. Yeah, the snow's not stupid deep, but yeah, good enough. I'll take it. So we were currently just at the top of this hill. Now we're just dropping down the side of this mountain, right at the bottom of this. Um, I don't, maybe a mile or so, maybe even less than that is our trailer. So we're pretty much just dropping right down this hillside, right to the trailer. Well, had a great ride today. Hopefully it just keeps snowing. It snowed the whole time we rode, and then if we get some more snow, the snow will be a lot better next time we ride. All right, so we just made it back to the shop, and I just wanted to show you guys uh, these Rocky Talkies one more time. Um, I just did a video a few weeks ago where I went over all the gear that I use, everything from my suit and helmet and radio included and everything, um, but I hadn't even gone out with this radio yet because they're new for the year. So this is Rocky Talkie's new five watt radio. Um, and then also I took it out of the pack, but it also has 
a microphone that kind of wires right to the front of your pack right here and then this sits inside of your pack. Um, but what I've really liked about it so far, the biggest thing is that we've ridden now three rides and I'm still at 85% on here. Um, compared to before, we've used some of the BCA ones as well as um, some Chinese ones that have almost a farther range, um, but they would die all the time and not work and they were super hit or miss. So um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to point those out really quick. If, if you're looking for a radio, um, the range wasn't as crazy good on these as it was the Chinese Baofeng ones that we've used, but the range was still good enough and I love how much um, longer the battery lasts on these. Uh, the other big thing that I really like that I'll show you is on the microphone part right here, you have volume adjustments. So that's been super nice because um, typically your, your volume adjustment is just on the radio alone. So if you're ever sitting with your helmet off, that speaker is right by your ear and it's super loud if the volume is turned up all the way. So with those volume adjustments, you can, while you're sitting around with the helmet off, you can turn your volume down when the radio chatter is going crazy. So if you're looking for a radio, I've really liked these Rocky Talkie ones so much, but we'll see how they hold up um, for the rest of the year. All right, so I was just uh, messing around with a few things on the bike this morning. Figured I'd bring you guys along with me and show you kind of what I was up to. First thing I thought I would show you guys in a little more detail is this Apache case from Harbor Freight that I use as rear storage um, on my tunnel. So if you're not familiar, um, the Apache cases are made by Harbor Freight Tools. This is the 3800 size, so they make ones that are smaller and larger. I'm not sure if you could fit any of the larger ones, but if you wanted something a little more compact, you could definitely fit their 2800 or, or smaller. Um, but this has been great because you can fit quite a, quite a large amount of stuff in there. Two major reasons I like these a lot are one is they're pretty cost effective. Apache cases are kind of just knockoff Pelican cases, but they're still made really well. Um, these cases are made, Pelican cases, Apache cases, regardless of the name, um, they're designed to protect camera gear, guns, anything that's of value or importance. And so they're constructed really well to protect those things, which means on the back of your bike, stuff will stay pretty well protected. Um, they also have a waterproof seal in it. So this seal up here on the lid keeps everything super watertight so no water gets in. And overall, I just like having a more protective hard-sided case. So I think they're way more protective than some of the rear cases that go on here. There's also some options that go different places on your bike that strap down. And I just think this hard-sided case is just way more protective for the stuff that you keep in there. So I'll kind of show you how I mounted this thing up. It's super simple. That way, if anyone's looking to add some uh, additional storage on their bike, um, I seriously think this is an incredible option. I ran it all last season, and I've ran it this season as well, and everything's held up great. Um, so yeah, I'll show you how I mounted this up. So pretty simple process. All you do is you just line up the case wherever you want it on your bike. I chose to do it so that it opens off the left side because that's the side I hop off the bike. Um, I originally mounted it backwards, just completely on accident, and I don't really hop off the right side. So maybe just think about what side you um, hop off the bike and want to have access to your gear on. So I chose the left side here. Um, super simple, you just line up the case wherever it is you want it on the tunnel. Um, and then you just take a drill bit that is the same size as whatever bolt you are using and drill through the Apache case and through the tunnel to create a hole. Um, next, I take some of this waterproof um, caulk silic silicone. So it's 100% waterproof silicone sealant. Um, you can get this anywhere and there's lots of variations of it. Um, I'll add some of that to the hole. Um, what that does is it provides a, a waterproof seal. Um, you already have, this is already does such a good job at staying waterproof because of the seal. You don't want to compromise that anywhere else. So it's worth not skipping that step so you don't end up with any moisture um, coming through here. Next, um, the bolt I used, this isn't as important. This is a 7 16th head. You can use whatever bolt um, that you want to use. The length on this is 5 8 um, I did end up with enough threads, but just barely. Um, I would think a better length might be three quarters of an inch. So if you're doing this, three quarters of an inch might be um, a better length just to give you a few more threads out of the bottom without being too long. 
I use a locking nut on the bottom um, just so it holds on there better as well as a small washer on the bottom just because you should um, that way it doesn't kind of pull through the tunnel um, I also add Loctite to the lock nut as well so just so you really make sure everything stays on there since you have so much vibration coming out of a snow bike and then uh, maybe even more importantly on the top um, I use a much larger washer when you tighten down these bolts it compresses this plastic a little bit so the wider of a surface area that you have um, will, will make it so that plastic doesn't compress down as hard. So if you can use a larger washer on top, I think you're better off. So yeah, super easy install. You just push the, the washers and bolts through there and then they just kind of attach underneath the tunnel down here. Um, yeah, right there on the bottom. So the other really cool thing about Apache cases is they come with foam. So right now I, have, I keep the foam in the top um, this is a, just a solid piece of foam that you can keep in the bottom. Um, that's a pretty good baseline because then you can just throw in, um, that gives you the most amount of storage for all your gear in there. And the, the little bit of foam in there helps stuff from rattling around, um, keeps it a little more secure. And then what I really like to do is Apache cases come with a whole slab of foam that fits this entire thing and it's pick apart foam. So this, you can kind of see how that is almost pre-cut there so you can kind of rip it apart into whatever sizes you need this insert here I pulled apart for the camera that I'm shooting on right now I bring it when I snow bike so it's really nice to actually have that foam because now I'm much more comfortable taking a camera since I know it's secure and I can kind of choose where to pack in that foam to keep stuff from moving around okay so the thing I'm doing today is the only failure that we've ever had on these cases and it's never happened on mine but it happened to one of our buddies that we ride with as well is right here on the back, um, kind of hard to tell on camera, but you can see that there's a metal rod that kind of goes through this hinge. Um, all that does is it just makes it so that this can hinge open and close, and that's just what they use to kind of secure that hinge there. It's just kind of a metal, metal piece that goes through there. And what happened is uh, it vibrated out once. So these, these ends here are open, if I can get the camera to focus on it there. And so with enough vibration, um, we had one of those, uh, two of these slide out one time, um, making it so that your lid wouldn't stay on. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to grab a soldering iron. Um, and I, I've tried to do it before, as you can see that that's a little bit melted right now. I'm going to grab a soldering iron and actually melt down more of this plastic here. Um, what that'll do is kind of close off that gap so that that metal piece that holds that hinge can't slide out. Okay, I think that's gonna work really well. It actually almost completely sealed off the hole. So I don't think there's any way for that piece of metal to slide out. I haven't done this one yet, so you can see the difference, how that has, kind of just has an open hole where that could vibrate right out. So I'll do the same to that side and I think we'll be good to go. So that should work much better. I feel much better about that now that that's kind of sealed off. I don't think that issue will happen ever again now because of that, especially where I'm carrying a camera and some expensive gear in there. Um, that makes me feel like it's much more protected and that that lid won't ever have any issues. So yeah, I think we're good to go. All right guys, thanks for hanging out with me this week. Thanks for watching the video. If you're new here, consider subscribing and we'll catch you next week.